Hello everybody, welcome to Behind the Music, it's good to see you joining us once again for powerful talk of music, music ministry and how that impacts upon us and what we're doing behind the music. Clive, good to see you again man. Yes sir, yes sir. Welcome everybody, those of you tuning on YouTube, Facebook and GX Radio live stream. Yes Jeff, good to be back this week, oh, it's been a busy week. <laughs> work and everything else and what not man but bless god we're here again we're here again and we have a fantastic guest i guess we had on just a little while ago just a couple of weeks ago patrick hepburn bless guy fantastic guy and a very interesting story and very well connected as well with what he's doing in ministry and so forth so we got patrick this week jeff yeah, I, I'm looking forward to Patrick sharing with us. It was a great show last time. Um, what we wanted to do was in this program, just explore something unique about Patrick's um, uh, 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 history, if you like, and some of his, um, some of his experience. And then he's got, a, I guess, a special word for us with regard to um, kind of uh, revelation of, of things that God has sort of shown him and, and how that impacts on music. So, with any further, without further ado, I'd like to actually just invite him into the room and we could uh, just like welcome him and just like share with him and hopefully we'll all be blessed today. So, Patrick, I don't know if you're there. I am here. Bless you, Patrick. <laughs> Shalom, peace be upon you. Hey, bless you, man. Hey. <laughs> Thanks for uh, having me. As you wake me, Patrick. I tell you what, it's hard for me to look back so so far. <laughs> no, it, it's, it's been good. You've been, you've been that busy. I know. It's terrible. I, I tell you, I just get it's so involved in stuff. I mean, getting lad to school. He's just left school as well. This was his last week. So oh, that's wow. been quite okay. emotional. You know, the baby, you know what I mean? It's like, wow, he's not going to school anymore. So wow. I've been dealing with that and did some more work in the studio. Um, mm. Somebody blessed me again with another guitar, Jeff. Oh, wow. wow. Listen, know, man. Honestly, it's just crazy. Don't, don't show it to me, because the last time you showed me a guitar, I went out and bought one exactly. The Upset same. your spirit. It's all right. It's a bass this time. It's a bass. Okay. So, uh, oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, it's right. a bass. I, I, I had one many, many years ago, and I had to sell yeah. it. I think I told you about the two guitars that I had to yes. uh, sell to get a five-string, really because I left yes. the, I'll talk to him when I get to heaven about that. Anyway, mm. but um, yes. but it was an Ad Fender Jazz, a Squire Jazz, yeah. okay. three, uh, Japanese jazz, and I let go of it, and I've already re regretted it because mm. it. Plus, I forgot to take the pickups off. Because oh, I used to do guitar okay. services stuff, and I had some unique pickups, some um, Seymour Duncan's uh, jazz oh, pickups. No. It had like oh. three little, three little switches on them. I don't know if you've yeah. ever seen those. Uh, you no, don't I'm see them around it. anymore. Yeah. You stop me. And I had those on, and I forgot to swap them back out. So those went with the the guitar as well. So mm. I, I thought about it for a long time, and then left it. And then one of my students, um, um, I was teaching him bass, and he he brought his bass to my house, and I couldn't believe. It. I thought. I've never seen this before, and I thought somebody had customized it, but apparently, I don't know, Clive, if you know, the uh, they do a, a range of basses, Fender, called Modern Player. Never okay. heard of Modern Player? Modern Player. No, never heard of it. Let me tell you, um, his came from Indonesia, and effectively, mm. it had not one, but two, uh, well, effectively, double humbuckers. So you had oh. four jazz pickups what? on it, four. So you had two at the neck and two at the bridge. Yeah. And man, I set wow. it up for him and plugged it in. I was like, I couldn't believe it. The tone, the punch, the everything. And plus, I set it up the way I like it. And he really liked it as mm -hmm. well. So shortly after that, somebody sold me, a, um, I don't know if you know, the um, Music Man did a lower range mm -hmm. of bases called um, Sting, um, Sterling. Oh, 
so base, yeah. so base series. Yeah. I got yeah. one of those really cheap, uh, probably about 200 pounds I paid for it. Got that. I really loved it. I really did until I played his bass. <laughs> so oh, I just wow. sold it. <laughs> Sorry, I just sold it I'm again. Gonna to, I'm going to have to look out for one of those. The, which one? The, the modern player? Yeah. Yeah. Modern player, very interesting oh. sound. I mean, I was talking to one of my mentors, uh, Alvin Ewing, about the bass, and he wasn't even sure they actually existed. Because when I told him the really? configuration, he went, "Never heard of that." Then eventually, it's not he a realized, configuration. It is two would, two jazz imagine. pickups, so it's yeah. four four pickups wow. and the power wow. and the tone. It's amazing. So as I say, let let go of that jazz. And I thought to myself, one day I'll have to get another jazz. And a friend of mine, bless his heart. Um, I can't call his name, but he's actually um, going through some medical conditions and we're mm. constantly praying and he's been blessing me with stuff. And he just said, I've got a, a bass for you. Well, he said a Gibson wow. bass. So I went, OK, Gibson Jazz. Went to his house last Monday. Friend of jazz. Wow. Uh, Indonesian, oh, wow. And he says, take it. So I went and a four, four by ten combo. I've already got my combo. Wow. Take it. I was like, my heart was in my mouth and I said, you know what, my brother, I'm going to look after it until you get stronger. Because he's saying he wouldn't yeah, be strong yeah. enough to play it. Mm. But I'm declaring by faith he healing Amen. or he will Amen. get that transplant Amen. because we're, yeah, we're waiting yeah, for yeah. He's waiting for a kid. He's waiting for a liver. He's waiting for a okay. liver. Okay. So uh, yeah. that's where that is. But you know what? I've, the week has been great. I'm still blessing, still praising. Mm. Um, mm. You know, what can I say? Reading, studying the word. Um, my heart's really in Hebrews at the moment, but I can still share with you yeah. a little bit. Of what yeah, the, no, that's you know, cool, I shared man. last time. Cool. Well, yeah, listen, last, time, last time you were on, you know, you were talking about um, one of this, the tracks that you you wrote, um, Sacrifice of Praise. Yes, sir. And um, there was a, you had an experience, mm. I believe, if I remember rightly, that generated that song. I'm not sure if that's what, okay. just correct me if I'm wrong. Um, and I thought it'd be very interesting to um, talk about and find out about um, what experiences, because it's always um, interesting. Because um, Jeff and myself were talking after the show, you know, and I, we were both saying, you know, it'd be interesting to find out what actually happened that generated the song. Because I know sometimes songwriters have songs and we, there were many that were going that we hear now, yeah. And when you hear the story behind it, 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 you, you review cool. and revere the song in a different light, yeah, you know? yeah. Especially when you hear that someone will say, you know, oh, I was just had this four words <laughs> bouncing around for four years, <laughs> and then four years later, all of a sudden, you know, God just opened it up and just blessed mm -hmm. me with the rest of it. And you know, you, you don't really hear the journey behind mm -hmm. a songwriter's mm -hmm. song. You know, and, and I think it's interesting. I think people be interested to know. So, yeah, just wanted you to share. I don't know if you mm -hmm. play the track okay. first or... No, I'll tell, you, I'll tell you a little bit first so you can yeah. touch on it because it's amazing how much more stuff comes back to your mind. I did share a little bit about the Praise and Worship Conference that mm. was being conducted yeah. by... Um, what's his name again? His name's... Carmody. Oh, and it wasn't somebody. The guy no, who was not. doing it was uh, Ron Canoli, came to oh, BCC. Right. Mm -hmm. Ron Kinoli was at BCC doing a praise and worship conference and they had some flyers by Somebody and I did the course, Somebody International, which is effectively Thanksgiving praise and worship as a lifestyle course. So I did yeah. that and then I started the songwriting. But then I went back a little bit and um, effectively I started, I remember when I was doing music at um, Joseph Chamberlain. Now that yeah. was quite powerful for me because that was back in the 80s and um I wasn't actually playing for my own youth choir. I won't go into no more details. But I was singing tenor, right. <laughs> and okay. uh, I, 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 I realized, you know, I wasn't get, I wasn't getting a, a look in with the bass. So I'm, I'm not going to go into. I'm not upset. <laughs> <laughs> hey. So anyway, pray for me, Reggie. So effectively, I was asked to play bass for um, Small Heath Gospel Choir okay. when it was being led by um, Lilith Woodley. Mm. Lilith Woodley, because we all went to Joseph Chamberlain College at mm. the same time and we were doing our music and so forth and so on. So I effectively started playing for choirs there and I was working with David Brooks. I don't even know David yeah. Brooks, pianist. No, I know. Amazing I know. pianist. Yeah, great. Yeah, these, these, obviously, these guys are from 
up north, Birmingham and uh, Dev Central, Central. Um, um, David David was in Birmingham. He, he lived okay. up the road from Joseph Chamberlain in Bursal okay. Heath, right. and um, on drums was Merrick Watson, who okay. I mentioned last week. Mm -hmm. So and um, Tony Wilkins, and then after that, to before yeah, the Joseph Chamberlain Sixth Form College choir was um, Merrick Watson, myself, Delmar Brown. Oh, right. Delmar from West Brom, yeah. Delmar from and myself. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, from Wolverhampton. So yeah. that's where I kind of cut my teeth in terms of music and stuff. But then mm, yeah. while I was at Aberdeen Street, uh, a friend of mine, um, she now uh, lives in America, uh, Janet Waite. I don't know if you've heard of Janet. Janet and Dawn yeah. Waite used to be at Aberdeen Street. And they yeah, introduced yeah. me to a book. This is back in the early 80s called mm. um, Power in Praise by the right. writer Merlin Carruthers. Now, this is significant. And I, I, I've got to mention it now. They showed me this book. It's a small paperback called Power in Praise by Merlin Carruthers. And in reading it, I was shown something that was so dynamic, so uh, extraordinary. I found it difficult to, to, to believe. It was about the concept of giving thanks in every situation. Wow. Now, I, I was raised in prophecy from in the 60s at Farm Street under J.N. Powell. And Wilton yeah. was my Sunday school teacher. Yeah. Me and Bonnie Dryden was in the same class. Now, we were taught, I'm running for my life. I'm running for my life. And, you know, when, you, when you're in trouble, you must cry out to God and you must bawl out and, and lament and pour out and so forth. We were never taught to stop and give God thanks in mm. recognition that we were in the situation, that he yeah. is there with us. Never mm. taught oh, that. So praise and worship was never brought to us as a sacrifice, as warfare for weaponry. Praise yeah. and worship is a form of weaponry and, and, and uh, to, to defeat this, the, the enemy. So in connectivity to that, I fast forward to a few years ago, I was reading the passage, you all should know this one, in 1 Corinthians 10, where it says, there's no temptation taken us, yeah. but that which is yeah. common to all men, but God is faithful yeah. that he will not allow us yeah. to be tempted yeah. beyond our means. But with each temptation, it will make a way of escape. So mm, yeah. I was reading that passage. I'd read it before. And the Holy Spirit said, read it in the Amplified Version. So I went, not me, Lord, because <laughs> I'm a Bible student. And yeah. we don't cheat by using the Amplified. We go to the Greek and Hebrew. That's right. And we go to the lexicon and so forth. Mm, That's what mm. I've been taught. I went to uni and did that. So but God said, read it in the Amplified. So I went, okay. So I humbled myself and I read it. My Lord. Mm. Hear this. The scripture said, in fact, let me go further. The word tells us that we are hid in Christ, in God. In God. Yeah. yeah. So effectively, any difficulty, any challenge, any test that comes to us must yeah. first pass Come through the Father Absolutely. and pass through the Son. Absolutely. So this thing done. The, the brother has circumvented me and stolen my thunder. Hear what the Lord said. Sorry, it's the truth. Sorry, you bang sorry, on, brother Jeff. Hear what the translation said in um, mm. the Amplified. He said, every test is adjusted and adapted. Oh, Look at that. Yeah. yeah. I said, my Lord. So it's like I could yeah. see, almost visualize the Holy Spirit, sees the attack, the fiery darts of the wicked. And he goes, whoop, let's get that one. Take yeah. that out. Take yeah. that out. Take that. And he goes, yeah. Wow. If Patrick does what he should do, that ain't going to cause him no harm. It's going to strengthen him. Carry on. Yeah, so therefore, yeah. as children wow. of God, as believers, yeah. any test that comes yeah. to you has already gone through the QC of God, the quality control. Yeah. Yeah. And it is not designed to destroy us. It is only designed oh, wow. to increase our faith. Every test, it doesn't matter what it looks like. Because Thank it can't God get to that. you without passing through yeah. your heavenly father. And if daddy let God let God. it through, hence when you go back to the scriptures where Jesus says, hey, he says, which one of you fathers have a son who is yes. hungry? Ask yes. for a bread and you'll give him stone. Or ask for a fish and you give him a serpent. Yeah. Or ask yeah. for an egg and you give him a, what did King James say, cockatrice or a scorpion. He says, yeah. which one of them? But he said, but if you fathers who are what? Evil. Evil. I had to go look evil. at the Greek. He said, yeah. why are you complicit? If you're evil, you're, you're, you're wicked. He said, mm. which one of you? He said, because you God's dads are evil. If you know how to give good gifts, mm. how yeah. much more will not your oh. heavenly father give you oh. good things? And when you combine all of that together, you see, there's no weapon that can prosper because anything that comes to your doorstep, 
your daddy God wow. has allowed hey, it to come. Look at that. Whether you like look it or not, that. whether you like it or not, Ooh. the theology is sound. Nothing Absolutely. can come to your door without a daddy God allowing it to happen. Absolutely. So it wasn't Satan, it wasn't God who tempted um, uh, Job. God yeah. allowed Satan. Mm, Satan yes. had to get permission. He said, I've yeah. been walking to and fro the earth. And God said, Well, have you come in? God brought the man's name. He said, Have you considered my servant Job? Yeah. Then he said, yeah. Well, you know what? I have been looking at him, you know. God don't know already. And he was watching. Him. <laughs> yeah. He was watching him. And he said, Whatever you do, don't take his life. So yeah. Satan cannot do anything, no difficulty, no trial, no circumstance. Nothing can come to the door of a child of God from your walking with God without yeah. God's permission. And if he's allowed it to come Absolutely. through, it's to build your faith. And as you know, with fitness, you can't build your muscles lifting feathers, Bridget. Yeah. yeah. You've got right. to have some heavy weight. Listen. Yeah. So, so, anyway. Well, oh, you know, man. no, no, this, 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 the old saying is true, isn't it? There's no testimony without a test. That, yeah. That is yeah. so true. Don't put it as just tongue in yeah. cheek. It's a reality. Yeah, it's so, a reality. So, so I learned to praise God from in the 80s in every circumstance. It was mm. difficult. My church didn't really practically accept it because we were told when you're in problem, you're supposed to get on your knees, ball and nose not run and all the rest of it. Mm. Mm. Listen. In everything, give thanks for yeah. this is the yeah. will of God in Christ yeah. Jesus concerning yeah. you. Absolutely. So that was then translated yeah. into the music when I did mm. the course that God's spirit is a singing spirit. So we continually worship. So uh, I was exposed to the word of God where it talks that the high praises of God be on their lips as a mm. double-edged sword in their hands. Wow. You know, worshiping God constantly. It says offering a sacrifice unto him continually, which is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. Worship is weaponry, worship is power, worship. And when you connect it with music, as we touched on the other week, that mm. comes from the word muse, which is to meditate, to to yes. to, to, to put to ponder. Yes. When you yes. connect music and words together, it is propelled with such power. That's why as musicians, we have an awesome responsibility. Yes, I acknowledge the, the, the spoken word is powerful. And yes. Um, the, the word tells us that uh, um, death and life are in the power of the tongue and they that love it yeah. fruit live thereby. And you can speak yes. words and you can undermine your works of your hands with your words. But mm. when you communicate it with music, there's such yeah. power. So that was one. That was the driving force behind the song that you're going to play for me now. OK, let's let's of just course. play that song now. Sacrifice of praise. That's the one. Sacrifice of praise. We bless you, Lord Jesus. We worship you, oh Father. For you alone are worthy. You alone are for us you make a place to come into your presence, bring sacrifices of praise, bring sacrifices of praise. Bless you, Lord Jesus. We worship you, O Father. For you alone are worthy. You alone and no other. For us, you made provision to come into your presence and bring sacrifices of praise. Might I say, um, as I did the last time we had did the show, that uh, my theology has expanded a little bit to under you know bringing the concept that you know on the Old Testament, mm. 
law, you would enter into the presence of God, into the yeah. holy place and so forth mm. and so on. And as kings and priests, we actually dwell in the presence of God. So when I mm. release that track, I will change the word slightly. And, mm. you know, uh, yeah. you know, we should walk in the light to the best of our knowledge and ability. Remember that one? Yeah. <laughs> well, you do, man. <laughs> right out of fellowship. So, um, yeah. so as we get better understanding, we, we develop that. And that's where that came from. And from Psalm 100, entry his gates with thanksgiving, calls with praise, give thanks and, and barak and bless his mm. holy name. So that's mm. where that song came from. Amen. So, Pat, listen, um, the, one of the things is, so, I know when we have these sort of experiences also, um, you know, the enemy can present himself as well. Um, oh, yes. Yeah, because what, one of the things I, I've realized in my life, um, whenever you achieve something um, that God has laid out for you, um mm -hmm. and and then the enemy comes to knock your confidence mm -hmm. yes um to try and make you feel that what you've just accomplished with the lord's help <laughs> wasn't really what it was meant to be. you know I mean, you know you know what i'm saying uh, fully so understand how do you who relate to the song even now in the sense that right let me see if I can make my point because I don't want to go like off on a tangent. Sometimes we can sit back and say, yes, Lord, thank you for that. And then sometimes yes. we can also <clears throat> then think back and think, well, did I do that right? Yes. Is that complete? Is it, you know what I mean? To me, yes. this song is complete. Though it's short, but it's complete because it's straight to the point. Yes. And it is straight from your experience. Yes. And it does yes. speak and minister to the heart, to the yes. spirit of man. Yes. All right. In terms, I understand what you're saying. In in mm. essence, the song is it is complete. But right. we as children of God, we're constantly walking in revelation, walking yeah. in light and getting yeah. better understandings of the Lord. We don't get it all downloaded one time. That's mm. why, you know, we must work out our own salvation oh, you know right. what i'm saying so yeah. in one in one sense i definitely agree it is complete just mm. as i say in terms of that theological perspective of entering the presence of god mm. that that is an old testament concept yeah there's yeah. no doubt about it yeah. because yeah. once we have received the gift of the spirit the baptism the of the holy spirit mm. yeah we have the indwelling presence of god yeah. and we take the presence of god yeah. with us so that's yeah. it that's the reason yeah. why i've made that statement and today that song is still pertinent because it's so vital to live a life of praise because it is oh, a sacrifice yeah. yeah yeah and and it is painful at times because you you know without a sacrifice if there's yeah there's a sacrifice there must be death something yeah. has yeah. got to yeah. die even mm, though yeah. there's a dichotomy in romans 12 where yeah. it says you know beloved brethren i I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies as living, living sacrifice. sacrifice. Yeah. Now, that mm. does sound a little bit hurt, but if you mm. look into it deeper, it's about continually dying to oneself. Yes. To and oneself. it's a continuous yeah. thing. Mm. So through thanksgiving, praise, and worship, that in itself is a dying to ourselves, acknowledging and recognizing the sovereignty of God and his infinite ability to take us yeah. through any situation, any circumstance, any trial, because we know Jesus already took the keys of death and hell, and yeah. that's the greatest enemy, is mm. death. And Jesus yeah. managed that. He said, hey, hand them over. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. Satan had to give him. <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. And he's our high priest. In fact, we are kings and priests unto him, the most high yeah. God, if you read yeah. the Revelation. But we have a, a mandate to continually give thanks and pray. The thing is, you even see New Testament in the Old Testament. As I said, the New Testament in the Old Testament is, um, is concealed. And then mm. in the New Testament, it's revealed because David was yeah. talking about, yeah. you know, sacrifice and, and, and offerings. You, 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 you didn't ask for it. He says, but a, a broken spirit, a broken and a contrite yeah. heart, you will not mm. despise. So even that. David was talking yeah. spiritual matters yeah. Yeah, yeah, then, yeah. thousands yeah. of years ago. So what God wants from Absolutely. us is that, yeah. that praise, declaration, yeah. confessing. There's so much yeah. we tell you about the word, speaking the word. I've seen mm. the manifestation of God's favor just by speaking the word over a situation.
to the point yes. where my spirit agreed. When you're saying originally, you probably didn't fully believe it, but you keep yes. on speaking the word. Yes. And Jeremiah yes. said, God, mm. God, God hears his word. He says, he, um, oh gosh, the passage. There's so many passages that are rushing through my head right now. I'm so excited about the word of God. He says, he watches over his word to perform it. That's it. Yeah. The scripture is in Jeremiah. He said, God watches over his word to mm. perform it. In the 1611, it says he hastens his word. What yes. the Hebrew means to watch over ceaselessly, ceaselessly mm. without sleeping. So when you yes. speak the word of God, God goes, hey, hello. And if yes. you speak it in faith, God is bound by his own word to, to, to make his word work. So that's why we go back to the scripture. It said his word has not gone out from him void, but it will. And he will not come back to him void, sorry. No, but will, will accomplish the purpose yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. for which it was sent. So speak the yeah. word of God. Sing yeah. the word of God. Yeah. declare the word of god yeah. live the word of god you will see the manifest favor yeah and ble i'm telling you i That's can't true. have to tell you in private what god's been doing for me because That's some true. of you just gonna yeah. get jealous That's yeah <laughs> you know what and another listen again bro we're gonna have to have you back on because again oh, you know, time is winding up and we we have to conclude soon but you know listen one thing i will definitely say um the song is a powerful statement in itself is a very powerful statement. And if one really sits and listens to it and meditates on it, it's also very challenging as well. Mm -hmm. And I'm just gonna kind of play devil's advocate here. Um, <laughs> on, I, I, I am hoping there will be a time where, I don't know who or how, but a fellowship will say, for instance, I'll be on three weeks holiday come July, no, August, right? Mm -hmm. And we all know about the scriptures, you know, when the psalmist used to be in the house of God every day and that's where they were 24 7. Yes. I'll just hope, I'm just waiting to see in this dispensation. Yes. The leader will stand up and say, musicians, when you're on holiday, spend a week in the house of God. Okay. Nothing wrong with that? No. Y yes. When you, I would you, love that opportunity. I thought you was going to another place, you know. But <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm talking about a next place when it comes to worship. Well, because in man. terms of, this is something that was brought to my attention through a chap by the name. He's the one who had the revelation of the Psalmody International. His name is. Oh, I'm looking at him now. If my pastor was watching this, he's like. It'd be calling that that's his name. He, he's originally <laughs> from Scotland. Mm. You're gonna have to be quick, Pat, because we're yeah, 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 yeah. Up. Anyway, yeah. one of the revelations that he got while he was sat at his desk talking about praise and worship that he could see that the church was constantly offering worship unto God day and night, musicians wow. in rotation. Yeah. Some yeah. musicians would be resting at home doing whatever they're doing, and then mm. they would come in and take over, then they would go and rest singers. And tw just as it is in heaven, it. I can feel it coming. Yeah. I just I, wanna... it's going to come. Yeah, yeah. Our churches are going to be going. open, like yeah. the, the like the the the, the, um, the mosques and so forth and so on. Mm. So we're going to open yeah. seven days a week. The church yeah. should be open every day of the week and constantly, constantly yeah. worshiping. Yeah. And yeah. people coming in, as Pastor Luita would say, churches should be a hospital. People mm. going sick come out whole. So yeah. that's what I'm looking wow. for. Jeff, yeah. we got to wrap up. Go for it. Jeff. I know. 29. Oh, my God. Oh, wow. Wow. Oh, just there was more. Say, you know, oh, there's more. Oh, Tommy there is so there. there is so much more. And you know, I just hope that people have just been listening to this and have really just been blessed. As you can Amen. see, once we people talk about musicians just playing, but listen, we have a depth hey. of the word because the Hallelujah. word well lives in us. So, you know, I'm afraid we've got to end now, but Patrick, you know we have to have you back on. Because <laughs> so but, but listen, I just hope that you have been blessed today and uh, let the yes. words just ring out in your heart because Amen. behind the music, there's more than just music. There is the Lord Amen. living right behind us and he, gives us, he is our source of strength. So God Amen. bless you. And uh, Patrick, once again, man, you'll be back. God bless you, Clive. All yes. the best. Take care. Take care. God bless, bless you all. Patrick. Take care. Thank Goodbye. you for the opportunity.